It's a tricky segment. Larger than a subcompact SUV and smaller than a compact but priced nearly on top of those same compacts. That's the niche Nissan is seeking to fill with the city-friendly rogue sport. Gordon Dickey described it as a perfectly decent car for empty nesters who want to get away for the weekend. The Rogue Sport suffers from being underpowered, with a mere 141 horsepower under hood. Christian Seabaugh described the Rogue Sport's acceleration as like a boat it confidently and capably saunters forward, gathering speed. But it's hardly quick, and the CVT moans like an old man getting up from his favorite reclining chair. The ride, with a planted chassis unperturbed by road crud or washboard, is excellent for an SUV of this size. Unfortunately, once off-road in our silty approximation of a snow drift, the Rogue Sport ground to a halt on several occasions with several drivers. Not a good sign. It also is plagued with non-steering feedback and suffers dynamically from grinding understeer, Frank Marcus said. Although Nissan cribbed interior bits from the upmarket Rogue, it still has too much plastic strewn about. It also lacks Apple CarPlay, and the infotainment screen is too small and carries an outdated interface. The back seat is an uncomfortable little cushion with insufficient thigh support and compromised knee and foot room although it offers two air conditioning vents and two USB ports. Cargo space is wide and deep but not tall. The hatchback required an extra effort to close tough when your arms are full of stuff. A fair effort but not a finalist. Two rogues in the family does not usually mean bragging rights, but Nissan has a one-two body slam with its big rogue and the new edition of the smaller rogue sport, same family bloodline but two distinct market positions and appeal. The well-polished, compact class rogue is currently the overwhelming top seller at Nissan, accounting for 30,286 October sales of both models, down from 38,969 in September, which is about twice as many as any other car or truck in the line. The Rogue has greater family appeal for its roomier interior and an optional third row for up to seven seats. The five-seat Rogue Sport, new for 2017, is a foot shorter with no apparent budget cuts to quality materials. In addition, its pricing is about $3,300 less making it an ideal consideration for a younger, gainfully employed pre-family buyer. The Rogue Sport is a European transplant known there as Kashka, which supposedly translates to a horse with a white forehead. It is an ever-ready compact with much flip and fold utility for hauling gear and activity toys. It is sold in three trim levels with front or all-wheel drive and one four-cylinder engine and transmission. Starting prices range from $22,380 to $28,380 for the loaded SLAWD, including the $960 freight charge from Japan. Because the Rogue Sport debuted this summer, updates and pricing for the 2018 model will not be announced until later in the year. Today's tester is the mid-range SV with all-wheel drive, starting at $25,330 and, with three options was $27,885. The basis model is modestly equipped with 16-inch steel wheels, rear-view camera and other basic essentials, including power windows, AC and a four-speaker audio system with Bluetooth phone and music connectivity, smartphone apps and hands-free text messaging. Standard safety gear on all models include six airbags, stability and traction controls, brake assist, Brake Force Distribution and Hill Start Assist. Its four-wheel vented disc brakes, 11.6-inch front rotors, 11.5-inch rear, are the same size as used on the larger Rogue, so stopping power is reassuring. Moving up to the SV brings more sophisticated extras, such as an around-view camera, smart key locking with push-button ignition and Nissan's nifty divide and hide cargo system. The SL can be optioned with a moonroof and a range of advanced tech features, such as lane departure warning and prevention, blind sport warning, forward emergency braking with pedestrian detection and intelligent cruise control. The SV is a smart balance of features for the price and the tester, with options, head long-term usability with contemporary finesse.
the SV Premium Package, $1,500, added such extras as mobile apps, navigation with voice guidance, 7-inch color touchscreen display, satellite radio with travel updates, a round view monitor with moving object detection, blind spot warning and rear cross traffic alert. The SV All Weather Package, $920, added enhanced climate control, fog lights, remote start and heated front seats, steering wheel and side mirrors. There is much competition in this SUV size class, including the Toyota RAV4, Ford Escape, Jeep Compass, Mazda CX-5, Mitsubishi Outlander Sport and Kia Sportage, each with its own assets. I like the Rogue Sport for its easy drivability, well-soundproofed cabin, smooth ride quality and tight turning circle of 36.9 feet. But I wasn't able to achieve the EPA fuel economy ratings and the engine is down on power for Type A commuting. It's 141 horsepower, direct injection 2.0 liter 4 cylinder has 147 foot pounds of torque at a late 4400 RPMs. The power is surprisingly adequate around town for a non-turbocharged 4 cylinder test with motivating a reasonable 3380 pounds, but passing power is more engine noise and moaning CVT than acceleration. This Trana continuously variable automatic transmission has a manual shift mode at the shifter console but no steering wheel paddle shifters or a sport mode. It doesn't need paddle shifting, really, but it is a rogue sport, after all. And while the CVT gets the job done, the hookup on hard acceleration feels unsteady and hesitant. The all-wheel drive testers fuel economy ratings are 24 mpg city, 30 highway and 27 mpg combined, on 87 octane. The best I could get was a consistent 26.3-26.5 combined mpg, but that still allows a nearly 400 mile cruising range from the 14.5 gallon tank. The front seat area is command central for the driver with a raised ride height, an even device charging area and all controls easily accessed with electrolimanous engages that are an upscale element on all models. The basic black of the SV tester was stylishly interrupted with piano black trim, stitching and exact assembly. Sight lines are better than they may appear at the large base of the side mirrors and over the shoulder, but zero at the teeny rear quarter window. The optional around view camera is a welcome enabler. Blind zone alert lights are inside the cabin at the base of the windshield corners, which is better than outside in the mirrors where the alerts can be washed out in daylight. There are numerous storage areas, large door storage with bottle holders and nicely padded armrests with center console storage. Large visors slide and have lighted vanity mirrors. The front bucket seats, of durable stitched fabrics, are mildly bolstered with good thigh and lower back support. But the front passenger seat has no height adjustment, while the driver has six-way power. The back seat area is roomy for compact with a fall-down center armrest and a low hump to the transmission tunnel for three across comfort. Max cargo capacity of September 19 53.3 cubic feet is square and flat with the back seat folded. There is about 5.5 feet of length by 42 inches wide at the opening with basement storage. The divide in hide floor system also makes a handy backboard to crawl grocery bags. Bigger isn't always better and the Rogue Sport is a smart right sizing strategy to reach younger buyers. Nissan's 2018 Rogue is a sprightly, affordable SUV that has the option of the company's Pro Pilot Assist driving system. It's the first Nissan vehicle to offer the program, which will also be available in the 2018 LEAF. That means it's one of the least expensive SUVs on the market with adaptive cruise control, steering assist, braking assist and warnings for lane string, rear cross traffic and pedestrian detection. Too bad the package doesn't work better. The Rogue is Nissan's best-selling vehicle in America. More than 300,000 have been sold this year, which the company says makes it the number two non-truck vehicle in the country this year, behind Toyota's RAV4 but ahead of Honda's CR-V. Like Nissan's Juke, 
the Rogue is hawk not as visible on the streets as the Honda CR-V or the Toyota RAV loved by its owners, who seem to be proud to drive something that's not made by either of the leading Japanese car companies. The entry-level Rogue comes standard with a 2.5-liter four-cylinder gasoline engine that makes 170 horsepower and 175 pound-feet of torque. It's mated to available all-wheel drive and Instronic continuously variable transmission. Also standard are traction control, automatic emergency braking, rear cross-traffic warning, hill start assist, LED headlights, a Siri's free voice command system, four cup holders and four bottle holders. It seats five and has 70 cubic feet of cargo capacity with the back seats folded down, and a maximum towing capacity of 1,000 pounds. In other words, it's a capable mid-sized SUV, especially at the base price of $25,380. The Rogue Sport, which omits many of those features, is even more of a bargain, starting at $22,380. The SL trim line I drove was a four-wheel drive version. Powered by the same 2.5-liter gasoline engine, with the same torque and horsepower numbers, it felt like a friendly family mover with more than enough beans to manage the freeway and the steep hills in my neighborhood. The all-wheel drive system gave the Rogue a nimble, sure-footed feel, and may have limited some of the tippy, top-heavy sensation that SUVs often have. The passenger space was roomy and comfortable, and on the SL model featured leather-clad seats that, up front, were heated. The rest of the interior felt a bit plastic, and made me wonder about its durability. But everything about the driver's cockpit was reassuringly close at hand and easy to operate. Most important, though, the SLAWD trim line also came with Nissan's ProPilot. This was my first opportunity to test the system, and I was eager to hop on the highway and give it a go. The system engages simply, with the push of two buttons on the steering column, turn ProPilot on, find a speed you like and press set. ProPilot functions like a smart, adaptive cruise control. It will maintain freeway speed and keep a safe distance between other cars, as on most similar systems. But it will also do most of the steering, asking only that the driver's hands be on the wheel at all times and nudge the steering periodically, when prompted, so the system knows the driver is alert. I found the ProPilot crude and unsubtle compared with similar systems such as Tesla's Autopilot, Cadillac's Super Cruise or Mercedes-Benz Distronic Plus. In traffic, the ProPilot caroomed a bit between the lean markings, sliding to the left, correcting itself, sliding back to the right, and correcting itself again like a ball in the kitty lane at the bowling alley. It held its lane on curves, but only up to a point after which the system would begin blinking a steering wheel icon and asking the driver to take over. The Rogue felt quiet and competent around town and at freeway speeds. But the ProPilot system seemed, again, a little clunky. It recognized the traffic was slowing down long after I did, and then braked too sharply. Then it seemed not to notice the traffic was beginning to speed up again, and accelerated with a jerk. Though it was more than adequate for emergency intervention, if I had dozed off or were simply zoning out, it didn't make for the kind of calm, disengaged commute that more expensive systems offer. I also had difficulty getting my iPhone to get along with the Rogue's Apple CarPlay and onboard infotainment system which returned to its home page and then required a complete reboot any time I responded to a text or a phone call. It may be a case of getting what you pay for. The Rogue's ProPilot may not be as smooth and sophisticated as similar systems found in top-of-the-line vehicles from Tesla, Cadillac or Mercedes-Benz, but Nissan is offering its technology for tens of thousands of dollars less.